here. And uh, basically the idea of, um, it's good Sir Tim Berners-Lee visited Australia. I think he's still in here. Anyone visited his talk? Yeah, uh, I saw him back in Queensland last week and it was a great, great talk. And um, the quote I found from him is, Mobile web initiative is important. Information must be seamlessly available on any device. And I bet all of you here, including me, have all those things floating around. And uh, some of you play with apps, some of you don't. But um, the idea of uh, building mobile application is not only relevant to Drupal, but what I decided to do, I just decided to show you some um, methods, uh, pitfalls, through the experience of a few years that I've been through. Uh, and uh, let's get started. So basically, I'll split this, the presentation into three parts. The first part, it's a mobile world. We talk about mobile world, mobile technologies, how we can apply them, how they get applied. Do you actually need them? Then we're gonna build an app. It's gonna be a very exciting app. And those of you who were sitting here probably saw what app is that? And it's not the one available on App Store yet. So you'll be the first one to see. And then we're gonna take through, I'll take you through Drupal tools available, what you can use, what I use, how I build it, and we'll go from there. So quick about me, I've been in Drupal world for about five years. That's when I first saw Drupal. I'm working for a company called Technocrat, but they pretty much gave me to a slavery to flight center guys. So that's what I do. There is no mobile involved where I am. The front end guys doing mobile, but uh, I'm doing all low level stuff of product importing. So, but I've been working to a few studios as well for the last few years, and uh, there was a lot of mobile initiatives. Mobile initiatives because a lot of the projects didn't resolve into anything, but I actually managed to collect the massive amount of um, code experience and information, which I didn't know where to put it. And uh, eventually I said, hey, why not to create something useful out of it? And uh, you can find me on Twitter on tsdev, if you want Drupal and the technical info, uh, you can go to the Technocrat and contact me through their Twitter or just my personal Twitter. It's Vladimir AUS, and my name is Vladimir. All right, let's get started on uh, mobile. So if you came here because you want to write the next version of Angry Birds and get millions, you won't get it. Not today, maybe tomorrow. I, I think there is a session about it, maybe. Uh, yeah, but, uh, and it's definitely not about how you monetize your app. Through years of experience, especially working in smaller studios, I um, saw the tendency where uh, customers come in and say, hey, I want a website. And the company goes, all right. We can build your website, we get designers, we get developers, we get all the shenanigans you really want. And uh, then the client goes, hey, but I got some data. For example, let's say, let's get a real experience. Uh, I'm a festival, Italian movie festival, and I have a timetable. Oh, I'm a DrupalCon. I have a timetable, and I want it will be available to the app. And when I change the content on a website, I want it to be available on there. And suddenly the price of the bill goes twice. And then the customer goes, but it's very similar. I'm putting content in one place. Why does it cost twice? So basically, initiative for this presentation is building trivial application prototypes. So you actually can show the client how it might look. You also, the most important thing, uh, show the client's strategy, philosophy behind the data-driven application development process. So at one point, you it would actually show, hey, here's how it works, and I need a bit more time to develop it. On the other hand, you also say, it shares some code, but it's not the same thing. Uh, we'll also show you how to connect your app to a Drupal and uh, on the fly. So let's take mobile approach. Uh, 
I mean, there were a few things people saying, and Drupal 8 is actually mobile first, um, taking mobile first kind of approach with all the front end developments and themes. And uh, a lot of people saying, yeah, like Instagram is an awesome example where, you, where they said, nah, we don't want to be on the web until yes, yesterday, I think, when they went on, uh, finally on the web. Uh, but we want to actually build mobile first. So mobile approach, it depends on your particular project. And uh, we're going to talk about approach more uh, focusing on our particular project, which is coming very soon. And another talk that can go forever, it's website against the application. Differences, bonuses, having one, having another. Is it good to have your um, application on the App Store, or is it better to concentrate trade on your responsive design website. Let's leave it all to the marketing, but let's say that here's a few points why do you need mobile application. Content needs to be available offline. So again, your timetable, you go into a bunker where DrupalCon is, you can't get out, there is no internet, you need to know your timetable. So here it is. Ability to save and sync content. Hey, I wanna snap someone on a beach on Kuji and uh, still keep it there, or uh, I saw a photographer's website and there is an awesome picture there and I wanna do something like that, so uh, I don't know. And beyond the web functionality. What's beyond the web? The line is very murky, now browsers have GPS detection and all of that stuff, but you know what I'm getting to. It's where something that your browser still can't do. So that's where we need the application, and I think it's, it's uh, it's a very distant life when we got at least two of those three lines uh, points. We need to build one. So Drupal at the moment, let's take the responsive design approach. It has an awesome tools available. Some of them good, some of them bad. Some of them good but very hard to configure. Some of them are opposite. I saw a lot of stuff from developer's perspectives and from designer perspective. Um, good and bad, but I'll just give you a list of mobile tools. Module is a great thing to look at. Not always works, but uh, it's there. It's for you to see. Responsive themes. My favorite is Amiga. Uh, basically, out of the box, give you the functionality of um, responsive design. Four, four by default. You can go tablet quickly. Uh, very easy to build and put it on your website and uh, yeah. Uh, Displays it in contests uh, when you actually want to say, uh, for mobile phone, I want this for, sounds like responsive design, but you can actually put different contests or different fields and stuff like that using either displays you or contest. But that's not what we're talking about. And of course, if you went to web services, listen to Adriz know there is a big, 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 big mobile oriented um, thought towards and initiatives. Um, towards Drupal 8 and how it's gonna be a mobile. That's awesome, but we're not at Drupal 8 stage, so we still need to build a client comes in, say so when my talent film festival is a month away. So let's talk about technologies available currently on the market. So we know there are native technologies, so something you go and build uh, using the code Objective-C for iOS, C++ for Blackberry, C Sharp at the moment for Microsoft, Java for Android. You can also use frameworks. Great example, and proof that Flash is not dead is Adobe Air. Uh, thousands of apps are all Android, Blackberry, and iOS stores, especially games. That's what the Flash is going to. But um, still, if you want to build an application, use uh, one of the frameworks. And there is HTML, HTML5 alternative, something like jQuery Mobile. You can wrap it in a phone gap. There is uh, API you can do, uh, and uh, use some of the features of your devices like geolocation, yeah, you name it. Uh, PhoneGap is developing miles and miles and miles uh, an hour, very fast, and uh, there is a lot of a lots of API available. And um, how about we'll actually build an application using Drupal? So. The story, GoFest story, it's a very interesting one, and that's where I decided, hey, I go to movie festivals, I go to music festivals, I go to development conferences. How about I'll have one app 
that's very responsive, very nice, has a nice layout. And all I want is a timetable, my favorite stuff, maybe later on we can rate something like that. So that's how idea of the GoFest came up. And um, uh, we can do it for DrupalCon, either separate app, or we can do it um, in the same uh, application, or we can actually have two applications. One is generic for every festival we can get around, and another one that um, just sits and uh, can be used for all Drupal cons. Why not? So here's uh, GoFest story, and I see you a bit starting to slip, so let's do some audience participation. So uh, I built a GoFest 1.0 about a year ago. We put, so who wants to be a website? I'll show you how it was. Come on. Here you go. Here's a Drupal website. And who wants to be a mobile device? What's your preference? Oh, that's a question. Here you go. So uh, we, build a, we build a website, we build a mobile application, and make them communicate to each other. Who wants to be iPhone? No, I'm all right. Uh, and uh, we made them communicate to each other, so basically just providing data uh, from website to website, and then go to phone, and uh, you can get, yeah, pretty much any festival. So I keep working on by myself, just providing data to my website, and uh, what happens next? Next there is come a few issues, so I have to actually patch where my patches. I have to patch a website, and then the issues come with mobile application, so I go, I patch the website, thank you very much, I patch my mobile application, and, uh, but no one else was putting the content, then I decided, okay, I need some more people who wants to do it for free or whatever, so after spending a weekend with my wife, she said, you know what, your content editing is crap. I had enough, I had a few hours of putting the stuff in, and uh, thanks guys, and uh, yeah. I, uh, I'm sick of it, it was pretty bad. And it was your just standard Drupal stuff, so you have a session, you have a festival, you have a presenter and all this stuff. Uh, and after that I realized, so it's not only about building the stuff that works, because that worked fine, and, uh, but it's actually, the content editing was another very, very um, important thing for a mobile <coughs> application. And, uh, Yeah, as you can see, I ran into the problem just by having this awesome idea. So I thought, hey, how about I'll rethink, rethink it and make it available to the public. Not necessarily people can go and upload the content, modify the website, but some easier way for me to do it. Uh, the choice for Air was I was researching Air at the moment. For people who don't know, Air is a package that allows you to wrap around Flash and deliver it to Blackberry, uh, Blackberry, Android, and iOS. It's still available, still kicking, and still pretty good. Used a lot of in-gaming. So let's finally build the application. So uh, I decided for the next version of it, let's do HTML. Why not? HTML is a new black. How about we actually do the iDrupal con app? I don't know if there are any Apple haters that hate it for me, but that's a generic name I came up with. And what do we need? We need a list of sessions, like this one. We need the ability to sort those sessions. We need individual sessions and add the favorite session. By the way, how many people here using the actual app that was written by CrossFunctional? Good, more than half, great app. And if you guys are in room, good effort. <clears throat> I think we should keep coming, but at the same time, I went on the App Store and downloaded the, another Drupal connect from previous year. It was still available, but the content wasn't working. I don't know, either server was dead or something happened, and uh, here come another problem. We actually have to, if we are providing the application, we either have to delete it after it's been used, or provide the support for it, because no one wants to download your application and see it's actually falling apart right there. But, uh, Last feature I wanted to show you, and that's where our demo is gonna be, it's um, syncing. Not only syncing session, but what about if you 
want some critical data update, like maps, for example, for us, because what if something changes quickly? And uh, if you push it to App Store, it can take up to two weeks, depending on the period, how busy they are. And you don't want a data that's supposed to be available tomorrow, available in two weeks when no one cares about it. So delivery is very, very, very important for this. And let's use Drupal. How about that? So um, we provide the data to Drupal, and we focus on delivering those three particular things. Uh, I'll tell you that focus is really important because how many people actually build their mobile application? Few, good. Uh, you know that especially if you're doing something for yourself or something that's not restricted by budgets, you can easily go out of scope. You say, oh, that would be nice. Oh, that doesn't work right. I want this, I want that. And uh, yeah, we just uh, can go out of head very, very quickly. So um, it's not only development as we saw. It's a content editing, it's a data structure, and uh, I decided how about for content entering, rather than going and teaching someone how to use a Drupal, I'm gonna use Google Docs and improve the structure. The original application work uh, this way. Uh, I would go to a Drupal website, I would create a new session at the times, create a presenter, connect the presenter to a session, connect it to a particular event. Depending on the rooms, I also create a room, create a room, so you, you get in it, it's a bit of a complex structure. But um, yeah, in the long run it was um, uh, kind of very hard to start. I, imagine you have uh, five different rooms running at the same time for two days. It's, uh, you will spend a lot of time actually entering each session in. And for a lot of the festivals and a lot of events, those information is not available. It's not really trivial to retrieve it. So for improved GoFest uh, 2 engine, so GoFest is just an engine I was using. Uh, we're just gonna store data in common place, like a Drupal website, read data. Uh, uh, I mean, like, uh, store data in a common place, read data into Drupal, provide the data for application, and then application gonna read data and render it the way it wants. So, I decided to use Google Docs, just a spreadsheet, because uh, we can publish spreadsheet as a JSON or XML for those of you who wants to go be technical. So, I'm gonna read data using Drupal using feeds, I'm gonna provide later on output using views, JSON, and then my mobile application gonna read it. For uh, kind of structure, uh, you can see I set up feeds. So I set up festival info importer, location importer. So basically each importer go to a particular um, tab you set up in feeds and uh, grab the data it needs. Uh, there was a bit of uh, core modification, not core, uh, feeds core modification needs to be done because the patch wasn't applied, and I, uh, I did it uh, about a month ago, but at the same time it worked fine, it was reading Google Docs fine, actually connecting, um, connecting the uh, entities to each other, no problem. And uh, taxonomies, I set up taxonomies, um, as well, uh, and it, there was also one of the patches also helped to connect taxonomies to particular uh, festivals or, uh, so for example, if you go performance uh, tag, tag one, two, and three, in this case were room for, for, Dru for our Drupal app, it was room, it was track, and it was, um, fa is it f uh, featured or not? So I basically set up like a common tag, so you can, depending on the festival, you can um, change them the way you want to. And uh, then I build the app. So basically as we were planning, we have our list of sessions, which you can see on the screenshot too. We had our help, which is basically your Drupal pages. And uh, we can actually click on them, we can add them to favorites, we can sort data uh, by date, title, track, or room, and we can view our favorites. So um, now I'm gonna demo you the app. This is built for iPhone, but 
because it's HTML5, you can easily port it to the other devices. Thank you. So we have a list of sessions, the one that comes with the app. Because remember, if we don't want to actually go and grab the stuff from the web, unless the web is not available. So there was some stuff that came with the session. Once we click on the session, we can actually go and check. And the summary is pretty small there. And, um, but we can see every, pretty much everything we want. We can see room, track, speaker, uh, the level we want. We can sort by title, track, room, and date. I can have um, different things. That OMS all comes with the Drupal, for the Drupal website, but remember, we didn't connect to a Drupal website yet. We can actually add stuff to the uh, favorites and can see our favorites straight away. So that was easy, using just jQuery mobile, stuff like that. Then it was the more interesting part, where we go to information, or we have something like about DrupalCon and about this application, and I even uh, check for updates. That's where we're gonna go to a website. And uh, when you click on it, so for example, if you wanna update your terms and conditions, you no longer have to update your application. This means your application can be reused just by using data. And uh, if we check for updates, you'll see that about an app, once it's connected to the help, it's going to change the name of about app too. So to prove I'm not lying, I'm actually going to go to my uh, Drupal website. Look at the content. And we should see something that co called like about an app too. And we're going to modify it if we're going to have an internet. Get it there. So next time, when the person goes, say, check for updates, or we can even build, like, um, if anyone today opened the application, they saw there's update available, we can do it and stuff like that. But anyway, we'll go and edit saying about a hello from DrupalCon Sydney, or hello from Sydney, or something like that, and see if it actually works. The uh, data sent by views and the view set up so they actually send the uh, JSON feed. So if you don't see, it's just your normal JSON who I was familiar with. And uh, yeah, so that basically what application is reading is those things. Uh, in the future, there is an idea of actually sending the date when it was updated. So it actually goes and checks, oh yeah, there is an update. So by now we should have stuff available. So if we'll do check for this one more time, we should see hello from Sydney. Yeah, this is this website, the one that I updated. It sits on a hosting somewhere, maybe in Melbourne or Sydney. And uh, yeah, so that was exactly what we wanted. We have our sessions. Still got our favorite sessions. So that was an app, but it's not the end. So we can see, we, we, we can do a lot of stuff with it. We can search sessions, we can leave a feedback. And for a feedback, you won't use um, the uh, functionality I did. You can actually use uh, something like uh, services. But I think we've done enough. We, we showed that, well, don't do it to me, please. I think I just ran out of this space. So I want to announce mobile initiative, and that's the main, uh, the most important thing of our topic. So let's just
Let's quit everything. But I think we should still quit the... We can talk amongst Chrome? ourselves. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's all right. It's a, it's a time to reflect on life. <laughs> uh, so mobile initiative is uh, something that I want to provide people with, necessarily for, not necessarily from Drupal community, but everyone. And it's going to be separated from uh, Drupal all entirely. But what it's going to have, it's going to have a set of scripts you can pull from offline and build your application based on your website. It's also going to have a uh, bunch of Drupal stuff, like modules, features that you can put in and build your basic stuff. Again, it's not about building the complete application. It's about build a trivial application. I mean, how many, how many companies are there that actually want a uh, simple timetable application? DrupalCon is one example, and we can actually, yeah, extend this application and uh, extend this application and uh, build a very good one which can use on any DrupalCon. Uh, we can uh, go and build something, uh, some other stuff that's very familiar, like uh, your standard information application. Oh, I blew it. Not my joke. Sorry, guys. So again, let's go. Sorry, technical difficulties. So uh, again, uh, one initiative is complete Drupal, uh, iDrupalCon application in, in HTML that's going to be published in shop this month. Uh, the, the stuff you saw, it's, um, it's a base for it. It's available on GitHub, so anyone can go take it, pull it apart, see how it's done, or build something like that if you need to. In the future, idea is um, create a view plugin where you can go and say, I want um, HTML app, and it's going to spit you HTML for your standard stuff. Again, don't look at it as a complete application, but you can quickly show to the client who comes in and say, hey, I got a conference, I have a festival. How about you build me something that is very sortable and can get my data from my Drupal website to there? You can say, yeah, I can do that pretty quickly. I'll just download this thing, which has timetable already. It might not look like you want to, but uh, at least you will see, do you actually really need it? Or you might just use responsive design. And uh, at the moment, I'm working with a few people uh, to provide the native alternatives for iOS, Android, and possibly Windows 8 at the moment. So it depends um, how people are available or how much time we have. There's definitely one coming out in March for iOS. So basically, it means whatever you saw today in HTML5 going to be available alternative for iOS, where you can quickly um, pr get the code, compile it, and get the application running and show it to the client. Uh, I set up the board on Trello. Any Trello users? Yeah, Trello is basically uh, <clears throat> simplified Jira. If you used Jira before, if not, it's um, uh, pretty much tasks you set up and you can collaborate with people. Very uh, popular app at the moment. Adobe uses it. It's, you, you can set up open and close project and pretty much manage people and manage their tasks. So I set up a uh, board on Trello. The code for the application you saw is also available on GitHub. So um, you can grab this application at the moment and I'm going to be updating it as well. And uh, we got a web page. Coming very soon. We have a views plugin. Again, as I said, coming very soon to GitHub. Not sure when it's, when it's going to be available as a proper module because there's a lot of testing involved and stuff like that. But uh, we'll try to provide, the idea is to provide the actual very slick way to get your website and convert it into the app and show, hey, here you go. It's uh, your standard app. You can use it. And Drupal.org page coming as soon as we get um, all the bits together so we can actually publish all the links there. At the moment, I think Trello is a good way to use it. So in the conclusion, uh, I want to concentrate on a few things. Uh, Drupal tools, 
view services, I should add feeds. So whatever, you need something. Whatever you, you, you need to feed your app, you should use one of the languages that the app understands, like XML or JSON or whatever. First, this talk is supposed to be a more technical talk. So later on, I converted it in because I was moved to a site building session. So I decided to show something and uh, talk about tips and tricks more. So whatever you need something, you want to build something, uh, you know that the views, uh, services, and feeds are your friends. In terms of Drupal, you already have tools. You, you don't need to invent anything else. Um, again, I, a Drupal con application, I think it's a great idea. Would be success or not, it's, it's not that. But the idea is there is a easy, very easy way to provide just copy and paste your sessions into Google Docs spreadsheet. And uh, the, your website pick it up from there using services. They just at all. And then the data is going to be available on your website. But at the same time, there is going to be a JSON feed uh, that's actually available to your um, application. And once application is ready, uh, uh, you can set up whatever you really want. The basic idea is why this initiative is separate from Drupal stuff is because uh, you can actually create uh, services using whatever you want. You can sub services, yeah, any language or any platform. So basically, in the long run, the idea is, hey, I have a, I won't say curse word, Joomla website, and I want to pass some data from Joomla to my app. You still can do it. So basically, the idea to have kind of it start, we started building it on top of the Drupal community because I think it's the best way at the moment to deliver the content as, uh, as, as a website as well as deliver the content as a technology for application to read. And uh, the main focus at the moment is to be fact, fast and focused. I don't want to anyone downloading the code and saying, oh, I don't know how to connect this to that. We actually wanted to make really slick where you go to your website install the feature, and the feature says, all right, now you can download this code and change one or two lines, or maybe don't change anything. And that would be the stage one. The stage two would be, we got views. How about, here's my data. Here's what I want to be available for my application. Publish me an app. And the view is going to spit you an app. So you can grab the HTML code and the stage three uh, native code then you can compile your app and show it to your client. So that's the main idea. Do we have any questions? No questions at all? I understand it's the last session of the world, so uh, I guess then we should go and oh, one question. I won't show you how then. Yep, yeah, I can definitely. So, uh, yes, I use jQuery and jQuery mobile and the PhoneGap because uh, I'm a subscriber to PhoneGap services. How many people know what PhoneGap is? How many people know what PhoneGap build is? Few. All right, I'll tell you that first. So basically, PhoneGap, it's, uh, it's a library written by a few guys. Uh, and what they focused on, it's they decided, hey, we have this all HTML stuff. How about we provide a library that connect Android, um, BlackBerry, Windows, Phone. They got about six operating systems available. How about we'll um, provide the APIs for, for that? For, and uh, using just JavaScript, you can control, like, you can read geolocation. You can, you can take a photo with a with the device if it's available, and um, yeah, yeah, whatever. So they start building it, and then Adobe acquired them, and Adobe said, uh, "We're not that evil," as Dre said today. But uh, so we want to contribute to the community. So they took the code. And they contributed to Apache as a, um, yeah. So it's always going to be open source and it's always going to be available, which is a great thing. 
for a um, special mobile project, and which targets so many platforms. Uh, but at the same time, those guys who build phone gaps say, hey, we want to make some money. How about we create this stuff called phone gap build? When it was, I mean, when it was created, it wasn't any money initiatives, but at the moment, Adobe is actually charging for the build. This is in one of their services, and if you subscribe to their creative suite, it's available. Basically, what it does, uh, you know, that if you're building an application, you need like a compiler for each environment. And in case of iOS, my phones, in case of Windows, you actually need certificates. And certificates, you only get them when you pay 100 bucks to Apple, 100 bucks to Microsoft and stuff like that. But you can only build Apple application, native Apple application on Apple, iOS application. You can only build native Windows 8 application on Windows. So there was a bit of a problem, like uh, which operating system to use. And uh, for a normal like uh, developer, having multiple operating systems was a bit of a problem. So phone get built. It's a service online where you can upload your um, phone gap application and it will speed up, depending on your certificates and settings, it will speed up the application for you, for Windows 8, for Blackberry, for Android. And they even provide you a QR code. You can scan and it will download it to your uh, device. It works with Android, it works with iOS and test it. So what I did, uh, back to the application, what I did, I use, uh, a lot of people s were saying that uh, jQuery mobile is really, uh, a lot of HTML stuff actually, let's not talk about names at the moment. A lot of HTML applications are very uh, draggy, you know, they lag in sometimes. And that's true in many cases. Uh, you can see the examples. Yeah, you don't have to go too far. Download any HTML app. You'll see something that is not smooth as screen. Like for example, when I built first phone gap, the scrolling of the listing was smooth as using Flash. But when I built it first time in um, uh, HTML, the list scrolling wasn't wasn't as nice. Like at the moment, it's not running. It's a lot of memory. So at the moment, when you scroll it, it's kind of nice. But this is all CSS tricks. So I decided, uh, OK, I'm going to build it in jQuery Mobile, whatever it costs, and see actually how I can improve it. Yeah, there was a bit of tweaks. And I can say probably developing uh, with HTML is harder than developing with Objective-C and Java for Android and stuff like that. But it's only in the case when you know Java, Objective-C, and a lot of stuff. Most of us are web developers here, and web developers do know the HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So uh, uh, there is a bit of tweaking being done, especially to CSS. Uh, JavaScript is pretty much straightforward. I use just jQuery libraries for reading Ajax and stuff like that. Testing was another problem. There are a lot of stuff for testing to set up, but you need a server. You need the server to uh, actually, for app to communicate. and Preferably, you need the stuff sitting, like your data sitting on the same server because there is a security policy which doesn't allow you to read some script from the uh, other website unless you know a couple of tricks or you're using some particular data format. So there were a few bumps, and if you want to talk uh, about like how to deliver your phone gap app, uh, it, um, we can take it offline and go from there. But in, in the end, what I did, uh, PhoneGap changes a lot. Before, they provide you a module where you go to Xcode, which is a tool that allows you to build iPhone apps, and say, a new PhoneGap application. And you have your template. You just drag your www folder and click Build, and it appears on your phone. Now, they actually provide you with a script where you go and say, build an application name, and it builds you the actually application, then you drag the folder. So pretty much similar way, only you use the terminal a bit. So that was my experience. The whole process of the building this particular app took about two weeks uh, after work. So it's not two weeks full time. But uh, there is a lot of minor tweaking. Like even sometimes because um, 
jQuery comes with a lot of CSS and stuff like that. Actually fixing sometimes, uh, I don't know, positioning can be harder than you think. And then there is a lot of uh, tweaking stuff that's glitching because Apple's using different uh, JavaScript processing library and stuff like that. So it's a lot of minor stuff that you actually need to look at, but it comes with any mobile application. Oh, I use the um, HTML database, which is, yeah, pretty much offline store, HTML5, local storage, HTML5, yep. So, uh, yeah, I use as uh, many HTML5 tools as I can. Yep. Are you also using Backbone, uh, Backbone.js? No, I... Have a framework that mobile? No, I didn't go this way um, because I have a friend who decided to go, I, I wanted to build it quick, and uh, I know it seems like using a framework with a phone gap uh, seems to be a right way to go, but I decided, okay, how about I'll just use jQuery. I, I just wanted to see the performance on jQuery mobile. So I, I thought, yeah, let's go this way and uh, just use jQuery mobile. We can introduce later. Another story, uh, my friend was um, doing the website and they decided to use one of the frameworks like Backbone.js. They decided to go with Knockout. If you've heard about Knockout, which is now part of the Microsoft I think Microsoft got the guy who wrote an account. Very interesting um, framework. And actually was uh, at the moment, which was about a year ago, was uh, no, they just released Knockout 2. And it was very interesting to see. But we ran into the few problems which weren't the trivial to fix, where it works fine. Basically, uh, for those who don't know what um, frameworks we're talking about, it's something that connects your UI with your data. For example, if we look at our application, um, we have uh, data, so like a session. So we have a session that title and all its description. And we also have a visual component to it. In that case, it's your um, list, so a numbered list. So in case you say, I want to delete this session, you have to go delete the data from your JavaScript, from your or your SQL, whatever you store it. And you also have to delete this li tag. So, and uh, lots of frameworks that actually connect uh, visual stuff to a data. So when you go and say through Backbone or through Knockout, say I want to delete this particular uh, element in array with applied agile for Drupal project, it would go and delete li because it's connected to it. That was a good idea until we ran to the problems where it wasn't <coughs> that easy to bind the form. So we have a form. For example, we want to edit the session. So we click on it, go to the form. So it, it puts a uh, title as applied, Agile for Drupal development project. So we can edit it, save it. But when we go to the same form, a, a deleting the other stuff, uh, it wasn't actually working that well because it couldn't properly unbind the previous pro, so it was only working for some. So each framework comes with its limitation, and I say, hey, how about we'll focus, uh, as I said before, and actually get the jQuery stuff out, and it's pretty much ready to go. And when it's ready, we're gonna improve it bit by bit. Because again, with this project, it can go as big as you want to because no one pays you for it. And uh, yeah, so focus, of that application was jQuery mobile and PhoneGap. Um, do you know about any differences between using PhoneGap and the new uh, Firefox um, uh, marketplace, HTML5 marketplace? Mm, no, I saw Firefox marketplace, someone sent me a link a couple of days ago, and it looks very, very promising, but Mm. Um, so I tried out TweetDeck and I tried out the Twitter app and it seemed pretty, pretty powerful. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, for people who don't know, uh, the Firefox also announced Firefox OS, 
which is part of this whole initiative. So they definitely get going into mobile market, so it's going to be even more exciting. You have more frameworks and stuff to work with. Any more questions? So then I guess I'll ask a few questions, people. So uh, do you actually feel when you open your application, because everyone works with application, do you feel if it's written in uh, HTML or if it's native? Did you have any bad experience, good experience? Anyone? If we talk about enterprise size stuff, Facebook is a perfect example. So how many people would say that three months ago Facebook was HTML based? Would you say it? So what changed since they moved to native? Any particular changes? Because apart from lacking of share button, I wouldn't say it was that much different. Mm. Hmm. Well, yeah, well, that I used Facebook there and I actually couldn't tell. Um, my experience with old Facebook app was pretty good, so I didn't have any lagging and stuff. I was just always wondering why there is no share button, but apparently that was also a big drag for Facebook, so they moved to native. Titanium is one of these, uh, again, HTML frameworks. Uh, yeah, that, that's the same, like Titanium, Corona. It's all new and that's what's exciting, like uh, doing this talk in four months, it would be a bunch of new tools coming into market and uh, even a bunch of new names, like Firefox now. Coming on soon. So, any more questions? Can you use your app to build? You you can you can take the you can take the code. I can install on on Android. It's not in the app store. Not yet. We are um, going through. I decided to polish it rather than publish it especially when the guys from CrossFarm, because when I started building, there was no app for DrupalCon Sydney. So I was like, quick, 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 let's build it. And then the app was published. So I decided, okay, I'll just leave it and uh, yeah, make it, make, make it better. So for the next DrupalCon, I'll, I'll make it available and uh, you, you can even download it now if you want to play with the code or you want to improve it in some places. This is a great uh, example of how to use jQuery mobile. Um, yep. Just one last question. Um, are you able to push notifications as well? You can do push notifications. Um, PhoneGap runs on a plugin basis. They wrote a plugin thing where people can go and write a plugin. If you don't have something for iOS or Android, you can go and say plugin. Uh, write a plugin and uh, yeah, create it. So there is a plugin that does push notifications for HTML. You can do proper push notifications. Yep. Um, I think there's a Drupal distribution for Drupal camps and Drupal columns to use. Did you know that? No, I haven't seen. I saw. So all, all of the, the Drupal columns use the same Drupal distribution. So maybe uh, the, the, the app should be part of that. Well, that, that's what I wanted to talk to when, when we'll, we'll make it available. The, co the code is already there. They can take it, they can use it whatever which way we like, and we can contribute it free of charge and uh, no ads. 
so yeah, uh, it's I guess I, I will contact them as soon as uh, wasn't on priority list because I was trying to get it you know as smooth as possible. It was smooth, definitely smoother. Yeah. Uh, Air itself, as a framework, you can download it and you can build apps from a command line. Yeah. If you want to build it from Flash, you, can, you need to buy Flash. Yeah. Once you get one of the apps, which used to be a Flash Builder, now Flash Builder, they submit Flash Builder to Apache, so Flash Builder is free. Yeah. So if you grab Flash Builder from Apache and if you go and download Adobe Air, and they've got a bunch of tutorials how to put them together and build stuff, Air is great stuff. Oh, I didn't do benchmarking, but it's definitely smoother than HTML, I'll give you that. I, didn't, I never had, oh, that looks ugly. Flash looks crisp on a mobile device, and they keep improving. Flash is assembler. Hmm? It's actually assembler. Well, they convert in it, I mean. Yeah. Application delivered in Flash looks crisp. Let's put it this way. <laughs> Any more questions? So again, you can, uh, yeah, let's enjoy the beach. And uh, if you want to contact me, go to the Technocrat booth or go to the Technocrat website. My uh, contact details are there. Thank you, guys.